Today I'm going to demonstrate the configuration utility on the X8200 series of radio modems. The X8200 comes in three variants. The VHF, which uh, operates on a frequency of 147 to 174 megahertz at 1 watt or 5 watts with a range of up to 550 kilometers. Um, is extremely useful in mountainous and undulating ground where the signal will bend round geographical obstacles and still maintain its range. The X8200-500 operates on a, fre a frequency band of 420 to 460 megahertz and on the UK license exempt band of 458 megahertz at half a watt with a range of 10 kilometers in free space and one to three kilometers through buildings non line of sight. The X8200-X69 operates on the pan-European license exempt band at half a watt with a range of around six kilometers. The configuration menu of the X8200 is accessed via hyperterminal or any terminal emulation program. When the X8200 is connected to the PC using hyperterminal, then if the first two characters after switch on a dollar escape, the configuration menu appears. This can also be accessed by taking pin 6 of the D connector to 0 volts. Then every time the power is applied, it will force the configuration menu to appear. This is particularly useful if you've uh, configured the radio modem at a non-standard board rate, because you can always use 9600 board to access the modem with pin 6 grounded. <coughs> the modem ID is a unique number set to each modem from 0 to 99. The board rate can be set from 1200 to 115.2 kiloboards. Parity can be set to odd or even, yes or no. The RF power can be set. This is a, a not standard on most of the series of X8200s, but it is on some. The transmitter can be keyed. This is a very powerful feature which allows you to do a very quick and simple radio site survey. You can key the transmitter on the base station and then use a second X8200, uh, which will be powered by a battery. And as long as the RX LED is on, on the receiving modem, then you are in radio range. The RF channel can be changed from 0 to 99. On the UK license exempt band, the first 17 channels are the legal license exempt band, which represents 458.525 to 458.925. The RSSI can be displayed as a bar graph to indicate whether there's any interference or noise on the local in the local area. Again, a, a site survey can be done by changing the channel, keying the transmitter to load the new channel, going back to RSSI and seeing whether there's any noise or if there's a, another user on the channel. The sensitivity uh, can be set on again on some X8200s but not on all of them. There are two COM speeds. Uh, the slow speed, uh, which is the most robust, um, transmits data at 5 kilobits, and the fast set, uh, transmits at 10 kilobits. An addressing mode can be set, where if that's set, then AT instructions uh, can be used to access the modem with the, the, the same ID as the AT instruction i.e. Di dialing up each radio modem in turn and sending data to it. 
Again, the enable AT instructions is self-explanatory. Restore uh, defaults uh, can be used if, for some reason, none of the radio modems are operating. You can restore the defaults on all of them, and then you know that the configuration is standard throughout the network. And from there, you can diagnose the problems. Exit and not save, and exit and save are self-explanatory. The next menu, um, you can set a message tag, which is used in applications where GPS receivers or non-intelligent distant apparatus um, is used. You can set a message tag for each radio modem which will be inserted on front of the data string, um, thereby, thereby identifying the source of the data. TX priority can be set. The normal mode is listen for before transmit so that it prevents data collisions. But if you're in a high noise environment, the, then you set TX priority and the data will automatically be sent regardless of whether there's any uh, RF interference. There's a forward error correction which will put in redundant bits and the uh, distant modem will reconstitute the, the data. All radio modems in the network have to have forward error correction set if it's used. Data can be packetized, the number of uh, retries set, and the packet size. This is only used in back-to-back -back, uh, radio modem systems, not networks. The logger mode logs all the data that appears on the serial port. When it's interrogated, um, from the base station, the data in the logger mode will be transmitted. The remote access allows you to configure distant radio modems using the radio link. The, the ID of the distant modem is entered into the set repeater path, press enter, go up to access remote modem, press Y, and the parameters of the distant modem, in this case modem ID 02, appear against the parameters of the local radio modem. This is particularly useful in applications like variable message signs, where you don't have to go up a pole to plug a serial port in to reconfigure the radio modem. The uh, signal strength is reported back to the modem so you can see what sort of signal path you've got between the two. To uh, leave the, to exit and save, you simply do Y, press carriage return, and it comes back and confirms it. The X8200 has got a very, very powerful repeater uh, function. Um, to uh, delete a repeater path, you press the space bar. So if I wanted my data to, repeat, to be repeated from this modem to modem 01, and then to modem 03, I'd set up a repeater -like path like so. Um, you need to engage the repeater path and then that's the repeater path set up. You can also use this function using AT instructions. So from the base station you can dynamically set a repeater path using the AT instruction and form a virtual mesh net network allowing to find a path through a series of x8200 modems until you get to the sending station, receiving station, and getting your data through. The third menu, um, each radio modem can be set with a network ID, so that if you've got multiple X8200s on the same RF frequency operating over the same area, 
you can distinguish them by setting the network ID. Only, net, only radio modems with the same network ID will send and receive data. There's an auto configuration um, function which um, a master station is set up which will scan the whole of the RF spectrum and find a free channel, then set up a beacon and then the slave x8200s will find the beacon and set their frequency accordingly. Uh, the, other, the seek time and the network timers are set accordingly. The TX delay is an extremely useful function, uh, especially when using multiple GPS receivers. Uh, the transmit, transmit, transmission can be delayed by a set time. So the GPS uh, receivers will receive their update all at the same time, load that um, NEMA string into the X8200 and then the first radio modem will have a delay of zero, will send the date NEMA string immediately, the second will have a delay of 100 milliseconds and then send its data and the third 200 milliseconds and so on. Uh, this um, uh, avoids collisions and produces the data in an orderly way each one with its network, with its uh, user ID on it. So that concludes the demonstration of the X8200 radio modem configuration utility. More information can be got from phoning Warwick Wireless on 01 455 233 616.